Hey y'all, this is Alex from Soil Mates of Georgia. Today we're gonna take a look at some of my tomato plants, how they're doing. I've got some really good looking tomatoes coming in, but I've also had some problems. So today is not a bragging session, it's a, a wait, I've made some mistakes, and how do we fix them? So the tomatoes on this plant here, this big daddy here, are both suffering from blossom end rot which if you haven't seen it before, it's just what it sounds like. The end of the blossom or the end of the fruit starting to rot. I'll show you another one down there. It looks kind of similar, it might be related, but I've got another solution for it too. So starting with this one, the easiest thing you can do, it's fixable, so you don't have to take the plant out and get rid of it. You do want to get rid of these. So done with those. But to fix blossom end rot, the easiest thing you do is just get calcium nitrate. And it's, it's so easy that it even has a picture of it so you can identify it on here. It's one teaspoon per plant. I've got three plants in here. I'm just gonna sprinkle this in. It says to keep it at least a couple of inches away from the stem or from the stalk. So I'm spreading it out. I'm gonna go a little bit overboard here and put a teaspoon on both of these because it's a big container and see how that works. And I'm just sprinkling in. Ideally, you'd work it into the soil but I have this uh, chipmunk guard on it, this chicken wire here that keeps the squirrels from digging in there. I might try to just work around a little bit with my finger some. You don't really have to. If you water it in, it gets to where it needs to go soon enough. That's all I'm gonna do. That, that's as simple as the fix is. If you uh, have it watered well, and that's not one of your problems, then it's probably blossom and rot from lack of calcium, maybe nitrate. But I've just watered these also uh, eight days ago. Not, excuse me, I didn't water them. I water them every other day. Uh, and with the self-watering container, that lasts plenty. I just fertilized these about a week ago. I think it was uh, eight days ago. So some of that might be catching up anyway, but adding the specific calcium nitrate helps them a lot. So that's the way to go to fix that problem. Down here, let's take another look at this. Now I'm bringing this just in case the problem is the same. I think it's a different problem down here. So for these, if you come in here, Susie, and look, these have uh, blossoms that turn brown. And so I'll pull it off. They just died. Uh, they were looking healthy. I had one, two, the one I pulled off, three, four, five, six, seven, I, eight or ten of them in there, including some more back here. They were all starting to look good, and they all just turned brown and went away. So there could be a couple of things for this. Could be a calcium problem. Uh, the other big thing is that we got up to almost 95 degrees the other day in Atlanta last week. So I think it just got too hot. It was well watered. This pot is not, this is one of my, this is my only tomato not in a self-watering plant. I think I had it watered well. Maybe I didn't. That could be one of the problems. I think it's the temperature. You can see the leaves curling up too. Um, but it also might be that it's not at the right acidity for soil. So this is a simple soil tester. I'll see if I can put a link in the, um, not in the comment section, in the summary section on the bottom. But let me show you how this works too. Uh, there's a different setting. You can, this is a, they're all pretty basic and they're different manufacturers you'll see on Amazon or other places. They all have the same design. So as far as I know, they're all made by the same company and just put different labels on. I don't know. Uh, I'm not uh, brand loyal in any of these, but there's a moisture uh, checker, a light checker, uh, which is just for how much sunlight it's getting, and a pH checker. So the only thing I ever do is check the pH. It's as simple as sticking it in here and you can see how it goes. I don't know if you, Susie, if you can bring the camera over. Um, but mine is registering around seven right now. You can see it's the bottom line. The left side is the alkaline side and the right side is acidic. We want it to be, for tomatoes, we want it to be around 6.2 to 6.8, which is a decent range. But you can see that's, that's pretty much right on seven, very neutral. I'll even try, and it's funny, when you look in different spots in the same pot, it might read differently. That actually almost looks over seven, or right around it, that could be seven two. Um, do one more check over here, if I can get through. Sometimes the uh, metal on this cage will mess it up too. Uh, but that looks like it's about seven. Either way, we know that it is too 
um, it's not acidic enough. So what I have is the same thing I use for my blueberries is a soil acidifier. And for this, I just put in a, a tablespoon for every four inches of pot diameter. You can also put in uh, coffee grounds will help a little bit, but I want to make sure I'm getting a jump start to it. And so I'm going to move, this is just a, a basic thing, it can do any setting you want. So I'll do two of these for today, trying to bring the acidity down a little bit. I don't want to, oh, actually I'm not even going to do that much because I don't want to bring it as low as a, a blueberry is closer to five or even five and a half. I just want to come down a little bit. And while I'm at it, I'm going to not drop that. <laughs> I'm going to put in some calcium nitrate. I need to do that on all of my tomatoes anyway. So I'm going to do it while I'm here. And as I work in the soil, uh, they'll, I'll get both of them in there at the same time. It doesn't have to be exact to throw it in there because not all of our pots are the same size anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Long as I'm here, these dead ones over here, there's no reason to keep something that, they're not gonna pop back up. So I'm just gonna uh, dispose of these, but look how brown those are. You can tell either a bug got to it, there's some holes in it, something could have eaten it up. But I really think, because I haven't seen, I've already had a lot of aphids that I've gotten rid of, and uh, I think that the big thing is that it is lacking nutrients and the temperature. So that's gonna do it for this one. I've got more I can trim up here. And I'll take it back even a little bit beyond. That one looked okay, it was starting to curl, but I went ahead and went back a couple of uh, leaves earlier. I'm dropping these on the ground now, but I'm gonna pick them up because I don't want, if it was a fungus or something like that, I don't want them contagious and getting others. Uh, but I'll go through and work through this. The big thing on this one is to make sure you're fertilizing on a regular basis, not just with your regular fertilizers, but also I like to do it where if I have one week, I do calcium nitrate, and then the next month or three weeks later, actually I'll, I'll do it the way I actually did it. I did regular fertilizer. I think I used a uh, 5 10 10, I might have done 10 10 10 on this one, and that was eight days ago. Now I'll come through with the calcium nitrate in another week. I'll put some Epsom salt in it. So if I'm staggering them, there's always something that's getting fed and they tend to do well. And I think that's about it for this one. You can see the other one. This was just his next door neighbor here. Look at that, that's beautiful. There's some great ones. There's some other blossoms. They're still yellow. They're coming in strong. That one I think is gonna be okay. But these, look, there's three beauties there. There's all of these coming up here that are good. There's a whole section of them up here. I think, this, let me see, this is, must be a cherry. No, this is not even a cherry tomato. Usually I see them like that on a cherry tomato where they're just groups of them, but this is just, this is a lawn keeper. That's gonna be good. Uh, going next door to it is, uh, I don't know the name of that one. It's not a cherry tomato, but it's it's got tons of them too. So I think the problem was, and I don't, there's no way to really know. I think it was the calcium problem, and then the second part was the heat. And maybe when we were out of town last week and we were down at the farm, maybe this got dried out too much and couldn't take it. Uh, and so now I have a plastic container under here that holds a little water for out of town. It'll still water from the bottom if I do that. So I think that's gonna do it for this one. So hopefully y'all learned something from that. Appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you have any other tips for us, let us know. Thanks guys, bye.